All right, so um, this tutorial is going to be called Zerg Invasion, but the idea of the map is, um, if anyone played those Starship Trooper style maps from Warcraft 3, it's going to be something like that. And as you can see here, you have a, like, a little base, and you can build units from your building, and the Zerglings and Zerg units are going to try and destroy this, and you have to defend it. So um, I'm going to go ahead in game and just show how it sort of works, so then, we, so then you have an idea of how, um, how it'll end up. Okay, so right away we have this little text. Um, we have our building here, and we want to train some marines quickly. You can see I've modified the price and the build time. And um, yeah, the waves are going to start around 30, 30 here. Uh, we have our leaderboard with kills. We have our base life, which corresponds to this thing here. And I'm training my little marines out of, this, out of my little building, and there's the other player's stuff. Um, and you can see we have Marauder, Reaper, and Ghost, and an upgrade. So we got bounty going, uh, kills are going, and uh, yeah, it looks all good. Um, and the next wave will be coming in a couple of seconds. And I got some more money, so I'm going to get a reaper and maybe a ghost. And the upgrade stacks to about 10, so I'll be showing you how to do that in the data editor. It took me a while, but uh, once you get it going, it's pretty cool, because you don't have to make upgrades for each level. You can just make it stack to 10 on here. And a Reaper is doing a pretty good job. We haven't even taken damage, so um, why don't we go ahead and get started in the editor. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make a new map. Um, and 88 by 88 is good. Let's go Core Hall and make it the dirt starting texture. Okay. Looks good. I'm going to show the grid. Uh, there we go. And press T to go to terrain. And I'm gonna I'm not gonna be doing this as advanced as the one you just saw because that took quite a bit of time, but I'm just gonna be doing sort of a raised platform in the middle here for the players to defend from. And uh just simple enough for this tutorial to work. Okay, and yeah, that looks pretty big. Um I'm gonna put some ramps on the sides of the edges. And they're not gonna be very even because I'm just rushing this. But that's good enough and maybe why don't we have a little I don't know maybe a raised area here and a raised area here and let's just uh, ramp it okay and I'm gonna hit uh, this button here and paint some concrete let's paint that circle large fall off large size good so kind of fits into our base here more it's not just a dirt base it's got some concrete that's kind of slow there we go and I leave some dirt behind just because to make it look more realistic like it's kind of worn out they've been defending here for a while maybe or something and maybe some some of this tile and outside of course you want to do stuff just to make it look more like a real kind of sand dune area. Yeah, and I'm just going to paint a quick bit of uh, texture between that, maybe some nice grass. Maybe this isn't so desolate as we thought. Um, Maybe some darker dirt around here. Yeah, that's all right. And hit D to go to doodads. And why don't we... I'm not going to go as insane as the map I showed you, but uh, monolith is what I'm going to go to. And I'm just going to put some trees. Or whatever. They're not really trees. They're like thorns and stuff. But just place them around. Kind of make it look a bit better. You can obviously spend more time on this when you're doing uh, yours. And, you know, place some rocks and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, that should be good. And I'm going to leave that for now, just to keep it simple. And let's hit R to go to regions. And circle or square doesn't matter, but I'm going to place the Zerg spawning region. So I'm going to have one right here, uh, one right here. And I'm placing them outside the camera bounds, but inside the map bounds. So um, players hopefully can't see it, but the Zerglings will spawn properly. And we'll place four there, so the zerglings will be all, or the zerglings, the zerg, I mean, will all be coming from these areas. 
and I'm not going to rename them because they're going to be our only regions so we know what they are. Um, now the start spots, I'm going to place them. I don't think we need them anymore um, as we did in like Warcraft 3 and stuff because as I found out, the, um, alliances are actually set through triggers and not through the player property stuff. Um, but I'm going to place them anyway. So we have four players for this map and a fifth computer and a sixth computer for the Zerg and for the base. Um, let's go to player properties. So we're going to have another user, another user, another user. And then player five is going to be a computer and this is going to be our base, um, our ally base. And sixth computer is going to be uh, the Zerg Zerg guy, and I don't think we have to set the start locations or do any of this team stuff, um, but we'll find out later, I guess, when I actually test this map in one of the later parts. Um, oh, and something that I didn't show my other map is under map info here, this is actually what your map name will appear in game. So while your map name might be something up here when you save it, you actually need to set this so that in game you can see the author, the description and stuff, and the name, otherwise it'll just appear like this, this thing here and you don't really want that. And you can set custom loading screens and stuff like that. Okay, so I'm going to save this as Zerg Invasion. Okay, and um, let's go to the trigger editor and just set up our starting resources and our starting um, alliances. So new action, and I'm going to, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to go pick each player from all players. Um, I could probably just do each player allies of player one, but I'm just going to do all players because it doesn't really matter. I'm kind of lazy. And I'm going to set, um, and this is where the nice part of the editor comes in, is that you can just do picked player, so each time this goes through, it's going to reference that player. Minerals set to 25, and I hope that makes sense. Um, it's basically just, instead of having to go player 1, set 25, player 2, set 25, player 3, set 25, it's going to go through all players and just set that picked player, each picked player to have 25. And let's do another new action. And now I'm setting the alliances. Um, I'm going to set alliance for a player group. So I'm going to set all the players to be allies, including the Zerg and everything. And then after, I'm going to make the enemies. So this will save time. So everybody's an ally right now. And then I'm going to set an alliance between player 1 and player 6, which is the Zerg, as an enemy. So now they're enemies, and then player 2 and player 6 need to be enemies. Player th 3 and player 6 need to be enemies. Player 4 and player 6. And player 5, which is the computer guy. So um, I think that's all we need to do for now. Um, that's going to conclude this tutorial, but in the next one, um, let me just rename this. In the next one, we're going to do the data editor, which hopefully I can fit into 10 minutes, but stuff always pops up, so... And part three will be triggers, probably. Um, so yeah, uh, see you on the next tutorial.